Great. Well, yeah, we do want to welcome uh, everyone. And we do have, uh, I think, about 350 people registered for this, this workshop over the next two days. So we're excited to see a, a good group of you on already. Uh, looks like from all over the world. That's exciting. Um, Kurt, turn it over to you to uh, kick this thing off. Yeah, so I wanted to uh, welcome everybody to the um, 2021 uh, Global Energy Managers Workshop. Um, my name is Kurt Kornbluth. I'm a professor of biological agricultural engineering at UC Davis. Um, I direct the, direct the program for international energy technologies and the D-Lab, which is kind of a design lab, and I'll be talking more about that. Um, and I'm a co-founder of the Sustainable Campus, Sustainable Cities, and I'll talk more about how that fits into the whole picture of what we're doing this weekend. Josh? Yeah, and I'm Joshua Morjohn. Uh, I'm the manager for in energy and engineering and facilities. So um, work with Kurt. We're going to talk how we how we work together and, and how this uh, whole workshop got started here as an introduction. Yeah. And so we'll have a couple of days of uh, sessions. Obviously, you can look at the uh, agenda. Uh, everyone's on mute and the webcam is disabled. Type your questions in the question box. The chat is enabled. Please connect with each other if, if you want to. And the sessions are being recorded and shared. Um, there'll be a short survey at the end. And if there's any issues, you can send chat to the organizers and emails. There they are. Yeah, so do, do put your questions in at any point in time. And we'll be uh, curating those and, and responding to them at the Q&A times. Um, but you can also use the chat. Just uh, if you want to direct the questions to the panelists, do use the questions uh, box. So uh, a little bit about this initiative. Um, this was launched a few years ago with Josh, Josh and myself, other faculty members, administration on campus, um, and other staff. Uh, it's called Sustainable Campus, Sustainable Cities. And we've been doing this for years, but we formalized it, which was using UC Davis as a, a, a living lab for green energy. And UC Davis is about 60,000 people uh, every day are on campus. We have our own water treatment plant. We, ha we have our own cooling plant. We have a lot of the things uh, that um, uh, cities have, and we use a lot of energy, and we're focusing on saving energy and lowering our carbon footprint. So we thought it would be great to take our lessons learned from campus, try to spin it out to other cities, work with other universities, other institutions, and try to share the learning. So that's kind of what this is about. Um, you can hit the next slide. Um, how does that really look? Well, it's four pieces. It's progress which Josh will talk about. That's what we're actually doing on our own campus to lower our carbon footprint, save energy. Then there's research, which is trying to figure out what really happened and how to generalize those results and, and push them out. Education, and that's project-based learning using our, our campus as a living lab. We have our own energy graduate group. It's, uh, it's uh, interdisciplinary and we work on uh, interdisciplinary projects from all students all over campus and faculty all over campus. And then the impact, which is, how do we work with others to make a real impact globally? And that's through this Global Sustainable Campus Partnership. And then this Global Energy Managers Workshop is part of that. Next slide. You can hit the next. Yeah, so, so uh, I'll talk about progress. This is really getting into um, the, the impact we make on the campus itself, moving energy projects forward. And uh, we think universities are a really unique place to have this type of collaboration where you can tie in your, your academics with your operations. Um, but you know you all are, 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 for the most part, energy managers, energy engineers working on campuses, doing projects. Um, and those projects are a great opportunity for getting students involved, getting classes involved, um, and getting faculty involved while you're actually helping the university to, to uh, save on their bottom line. So um, that's, you know, I, I, my, my office does projects. We do a lot of engagement projects with students. Um, you'll hear about more of those, um, but we also are doing energy projects on campus. And that's where the partnership with, with Kurt and his classes, uh, you know, became so strong is, is he's doing project-based classes. And then we have the projects that, that uh, he can tie into his classes. One really concrete example um, that's, that's very relevant to, I'm sure all of us is, is uh, opening up for fall quarter with students in person again for the first time in, in 18 months. Um, you know, everyone's been working on things like filter upgrades. We actually set all our classrooms at 100% outside air. Um, and then we also were able to, uh, as we were getting ready for, for the fall opening, a, a professor reached out to us who I've been working with over the past two years 
Um, he's in air quality and, and we talked about wildfire smoke. We talked about uh, COVID and, and risk mitigation. And as fall quarter was coming, he said, hey, if you guys need help measuring air exchange rates and in your rooms, let me know. Um, you know, on, on one hand, you might say, well, that's the last thing I need. I'm, I'm busy getting things ready. Um, but we were able to give him some students from our team, some of our interns, and he trained them and they had some student built particle sensors. He had bought some nebulizers. And as the picture shows here, they were able to go out and, and run these nebulizers, putting particles into the, into the space. Um, then the particle sensors were able to measure the, the degradation over time of the particles in the room. And we were able to get really accurate measurements on effective air change rates in rooms where we didn't have airflow sensors. So we were going off of 50 year old design drawings saying, yeah, we think your air changes are, are six air changes per hour. But this gave me a lot more comfort. It gave faculty a lot more comfort um, knowing actual effective air changes. Um, and that came about because we had this collaboration between faculty and, and uh, the operations already going on. Um, so just an example of the kind of things you can, you can have on your campus uh, when you have this kind of partnership. Um, and then in terms of research, you know, a lot of these projects provide a great opportunity for research. Um, this is a picture of Devin, one of our energy graduate group students who graduated already, um, but worked for her master's thesis on a, on a chilled water optimization project with our chilled water uh, plant on campus, wrote a paper about it um, that got published and then ended up getting hired by a company that does grid optimization in California for demand response. Um, we also do a lot of research around uh, participatory thermal sensing, our thermostat application and, and feedback um, in, engagement type um, research. And, and so there's a lot of opportunities in your projects to tie them into research uh, directly with the students and the faculty. Yeah, and then um, one of the uh, keystones of this whole um, effort is the uh, Path to Zero Net Energy course that we run, which is a project-based course, which is open to students from all over campus, where uh, we spend one quarter, um, a culmination of, of a lot of effort to have student teams work on specific projects, somewhere eight to 10 projects on campus um, during this uh, quarter. And we're going to be talking more about this in the education session this afternoon. So please tune in and we'll give you the details on how we do it. Um, and just a shout out to Josh. Uh, he's a little bit humble, but those guys are, are managing 1,200 buildings on campus. And they have real-time data for most of those buildings. So uh, we have a, it's a pretty amazing effort that's going on here at UC Davis as far as managing energy on campus. Let's hit the next slide. Yeah, and it's a, it's a great opportunity, like we've been saying, to get, get students involved. And, and one of the things that, that we're most proud of is uh, seeing the students that work for us then succeed in their careers. They get good jobs. You know, that I mentioned uh, Devin working for Olivine. We've got uh, students, one of our grad students went to Sandia National Laboratories, another to the National Rural Electric Cooperative. A couple of our students, an undergrad and a graduate student are now energy engineers at Stanford. Um, so we love to have that kind of uh, opportunity. You know, I think that employees are looking for students who have that kind of experience where they're actually working on real projects while they're in school. Um, and then we get a lot of benefit from having these students working in our office. In fact, a number of our, our staff now uh, were former students. Um, so that's always exciting. Yeah, and, and just to put it out there that um, what ends up happening with us anyway is that instead of it just being more effort for everybody, it's actually less effort with more productivity. So the, the professors end up with better research, the students end up with a better experience, better job opportunities, the campus ends up with less energy use. So it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. The 2019 workshop was a big success. That was in person. We had 70 participants from all over the world. Next slide. 2020, of course, we went online. We had more, uh, big surprise, more attendees, but we had them all over the world also, 46 universities, 39 companies, 250 people. We had speakers from as far away as Cote d'Ivoire. And I think it was very successful. It was a little bit of the blueprint for this one. And then uh, the next one. Yeah, so uh, this 2021 workshop, uh, we'll, we'll, we've got, like I said, I think about 350 registrants. I did a, a word cloud here of, of what you said your titles were. And you can see we've got a lot of, uh, technical people, energy engineers, energy managers, um, people working in sustainability. Um, so I think we all are uh, 
you were in the same boat and that's what we wanted is to get people together that can share some of these ideas, um, best practices. We're really excited to hear from you guys. Um, we want to hear one uh, before we get started, kind of know who, who our audience is and, and who's in this workshop. So um, Ali's going to push out a poll here and you guys have to wake up and, and get involved. We want you to respond to the poll. Mm -hmm. Where are you calling in from? And we're going to give you either California, you should be able to see it now, um, or the rest of the United States, and you can chat your location to us, uh, or international. We'd love to hear where you are. Um, and then second question, we want to know what's your affiliation, because I think we have a pretty good spread between uh, instructional, student, operational, some industry and government. So um, go ahead and put in your, your info, and we will uh, show the results as soon as those come in. Yeah, and, and Josh, I wanted to chime in that I looked in the chat, and uh, two former students from Lawrence Berkeley National Lab, lab which we didn't um, mention, and actually that's three students now because uh, one of my students went there. So, uh, Marco, uh, sorry for leaving you guys out, but <laughs> certainly part of the success story. We haven't forgot about Marco. <laughs> wow, these pe people from all over the place. We got NREL, I see. Uh, University of Kentucky, wow, North Carolina Healthcare. Wow, this is amazing. And uh, well, the guy from Lawrence Berkeley keeps writing in, so I think that's still the same one. Uh, New Hampshire, awesome. See some people from the East Coast. Dayton, I think we know some of those people. Wow, we have a, a Humphrey fellow from Lebanon coming in. Uh, that's awesome. Nice to hear from you. BC, great. Wow, this people. Uh, this is awesome. Japan from Panasonic. Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech. Oh, and we have some people from um, working with you from DTU, Frida, UCSF, Caltech. Monterey, Mexico, some people from PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric. Great, and now you can start to see the results here. It looks like uh, about a 60-40 split between California and everywhere else. We've got 10% international, that's exciting. And uh, we've got about 50% on the operations side. Wow. And uh, that's, that's because it's an energy manager's workshop, but it's great to see we've got about 20% industry, 20% government. <clears throat> All right, this is really exciting. Yeah. All right. Massachusetts, Sac College, Walnut, California, Stanford. I'm just looking through it. We got people from all over. Great. So I'll run through the agenda real quick for the day, and then we're going to launch into our keynote. Uh, we're really glad to have you all here. Just so you know, you know, we're keeping the day short, so no one, no one gets too too bored. Um, and it's a long time to be on Zoom, we understand, but we, uh, we hope you stick around for it all. And at the end, we're going to have a raffle at 2 p.m. Um, Ali's been working on some great prizes, so we do hope you stick around for that. you got to be present to win. Um, but we're going to launch into a keynote and um, hear from Denmark. And then we're going to hear the kind of the hot topics this, this year are resilience, of course, um, mitigating major disruptive events. That's something we've all experienced over the last year and a half, um, you know, whether you're in California or not. And, uh, and then decarbonization kind of as an overarching theme that we've had for this workshop. And we're going to hear for both of those sessions really from the, the really high scale um, you know, grid level down to uh, real specific detailed projects, kind of the nuts and bolts. So I think there'll be something for everyone. Um, we've, we've got lunch with live music. So we unfortunately won't be providing you lunch, but while you eat your lunch, you can enjoy some live music. Um, and then as Kurt mentioned, he's got an education session, which is not just for educators. We want really everyone to be able to jump in there um, and learn how you can work with educators, um, or if you're an educator, how you can work with operations to, to do project-based learning. And uh, we've got some great speakers for all of these from all over the world. 